and it is a pleasure to introduce Karen Kadazian. She's a double talent. Before she wrote her award-winning book, The Whip, she was well-known as a theater personality, and especially for her work with the great playwright Tennessee Williams. Of course, her acting career goes back even earlier than that. Although she had early on determined to become a CIA spy, Karen became one of that wonderful band of children on the At Linkletter show, Kids Say the Darndest Things. Not to worry, Karen, we're not going to ask you to regress tonight. <laughs> After studying other play, among other places at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, Karen went on to an adult career, which has included her recognitions, including a Best Actress Award from the Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle. While she has worked with and performed in many other plays by other playwrights, including one of my favorites, by the way, the role of Maria Callas in Terence McNally's Masterclass, for which she won an Ovation Award, unquestionably Karen is best known for her work in the plays of Tennessee Williams. In fact, after seeing her perform in the role of Serafina in The Rose Tattoo, the playwright publicly thanked her and thus began a friendship. Gosh, Karen... The Rose Tattoo, Sweet Bird of You, Night of Iguana, some of the best plays I have ever seen or read. And now last year, her book, The Whip, was published by Hanson Publishing. The audio version of the book was recorded by Robin Weigert, who was our guest last week. And I have had the pleasure of listening to and greatly enjoying that audio. And I'm looking forward to sharing a glowing review on the It Matters Radio website. So... How did you happen on this wonderful character and her history, his history? It's kind of hard to know which pronoun to use, isn't it? (laughs) Well, it's interesting. Um, Many, many years ago, I was reading uh, Cosmopolitan magazine, How to Find a Man, this wonderful article about wild women of the West. And one of the people in it was Charlie Parkhurst this extraordinary woman that I wrote about. And I used to think about her, and I thought, how in God's name would a woman disguise herself as a man, dry stagecoach for 30 years, and not be discovered by those macho men that she hung out with? This woman is buried in Watsonville, California, in the Oddfellow Cemetery, Um, you know, she was a real woman. So all of a sudden, years later, to answer your question in a very long way, my mom uh, passed away, and I had all these feelings, and I thought, you know, I want to write something and dedicate it to to her, to my dad, and you're an athlete of the emotions. That's what actors are, and I think writers are too. Anyway, and so I sat down, and six years and 27 drafts later, I finished the whip. But I I have the feeling that you had some really powerful modern social topics in mind as well, Uh, feminism, race relations, little little stuff like that. (laughs) And I think one of the most really powerful symbols in the book is very early on when they're riding that stagecoach, and and Charlie has the reporter with him, and they go across the bridge. And it collapses just as Charlie drives the team across. And I, you know, I just saw that as such a wonderful uh, precursor and symbol of all the dangerous transitions you wanted your your uh, readers to think about. Now, was that something that you had in your mind? You know, when she dies at the beginning, I have her inhale. The whole book is that one breath we live on, and I try to say symbolically that. You know, life is so short. We have to put our arms around it. Of course, that is the lesson that she takes from Jonas, who, by the way, I I thought was a a very subtly but multi-layered character. You know, your book is gritty. I mean, the realism is gritty. You can feel the, the... the dirt and sand <laughs> coming up in your face <laughs> on the, on the, and, you know, things like that. And I, I just had to ask you about your research. Now, driving a, a team of horses, you, 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 you know, I mean, this is, this is a skill. <laughs> this is a, a skill. A, an and the interesting thing that I found out is that you didn't have to be necessarily strong, 
but you had to be incredibly agile. It was like playing the piano, and I think I mentioned that in the book, um, because you were handling six horses, six teams, mm-hmm. and, you know, um, each rein was a different horse. Right. And so, God, you talk about multitasking. Um, and also you had to have an incredible rapport with the horses. You literally can transport thoughts if they trust you and respect you. And the only way they do that is if you trust them and respect them. Then there's this kind of strange mental communication that you can have with the horse, and that's something that Charlie must have had and all great whips or stagecoach drivers did have. That is what where she finds meaning in life, and all of a sudden she's learning from this father figure how to communicate with the other. In this case, the other is Beelzebub, or those great horse. But yes. it goes on to be the world and, and other beings. Yes. I mean, I, that's so beautiful, and that's absolutely right. One of the messages in the book, in every problem or challenge, there's a gift in its hand. I feel that if we can look at life that way, it's not so damaging that Mm -hmm. we know that someday, somehow, what is happening to us now will be turned around into something hopefully beautiful. I think that's a wonderful philosophy. Your background is in in theater. One of the things that struck me about your characters was they they were dramatic. They they didn't deal with the the tiny things. Um, a lot of time when people are writing books, we we get caught up in the in the little the day to day in the, in our writing. But your characters, just right from the very beginning, are, are dealing with great s- sweeping kinds of issues. And I was wondering, to what degree do you think your background in theater um, helped you? to work in in this book and and to come the way you wrote the book? Actors, if they have the discipline Mm -hmm. to um, sit themselves down and write, could be some of the best writers because, first of all, their their training is such that they access thoughts. They access, that's one of the things, particularly in film, great actors you can see on their faces without saying anything. For me, the exciting thing in life, you take the vividness of life and write about it. I'm interested in how we survive. And Mm -hmm. that, again, the book is about survival. As an artist, I think part of what we need to do or should do is not just entertain, but to heal. And hopefully that's maybe what you're responding to a little bit in the characters, that they're all, in a sense, a lesson. I have a question to ask you. Which character would you like to be in the book? Oh, Charlie. I mean, hey, absolutely. Why? I why? knew you were going to say that, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> why, Ken? Why? 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 Uh-huh. Beca- because of the absolute integrity with which the character approaches the challenge of of his life this is this is a, he's not backing down he just keeps going forward and <laughs> takes it as it comes i have a dear dear friend he was the producer and director of the audiobook bob dean i had and he he's a success Extraordinary man, and he just got ALS, mm. Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. Oh. And we're both, Robin and I, are devastated. But you know what he's doing that's so beautiful to follow what you're saying? He's doing a little video blog every day um, for people who are ill. Even though he has this horrible challenge, you know, he's going ahead. He's 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 not, I don't know if he's afraid, but he's certainly, you know, putting his arms around life and not letting it defeat him. So maybe that's what you're talking about? I think it is. I know I'm going to be in trouble with some of our listeners if I don't get a couple Tennessee Williams questions in. So very quickly, what was he like to actually work with? 
<laughs> oh, my God. I think he's one of those people that's very hard to describe because he was like, you know, when you look through um, one of those kaleidoscopes and it's always changing, he was like that. And had had so many, every second there was a different man there, almost like his, but he was, if you really want to know the truth, if you look at his women that he wrote, he's very much like his women. Um, oh. Blanche, um, Alexander DeLago and Sweet Bird, um, all of the women are who he was. And he was um, funny, amazing, poetic, um, wounded. I believe we all have a wounded child that lives inside of us, and the artist is able to take that wounded child and make them speak and dance and create, and that's what he did. What role do you think was perfect for you, even though you never got to play it? Oh, never got to play it. Mm -hmm. mm, good question. There's one role I would love to play again. I'm too old for it now, but um, I played it too young when I did play it, which is Sweet Bird, Alexandra, in Sweet Bird of Youth. I was 30, and, you know, she was like 50. That's a role that fascinates me. Um, because she is, she's not. It isn't that she's just an actress who's losing her youth um, and is f afraid of life. But you know, he he has kind of her the inside of her mind. So I was too young to understand her. You know what we're talking about now? All of this. This is mm -hmm. what I needed to know then. Uh -huh. Ed Harris did it with me. He was just a beginning young actor then. And so mm -hmm. he and I did it together. It was fabulous. Um, he fun. was. And we had a real kind of chemistry together. I understand that you're working at writing the screenplay for The Whip. And I yes, needed to know, I how's that going? And It's going and very well. And the first draft is done. And now I'm working on the second. And, you know, um, God, if we're hoping that it'll be a film. I certainly hope be. so, and it's another one I'm definitely going to go to see. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. We'll have to do uh, first, first day tickets, okay? And Is the it? next question is, are you going to do another book? I'm actually writing another book now, but I have thoughts of what do you think of this, of taking each one of the characters in the book and then writing it from their point of view, where Charlie would be a small character in it, and then oh, it would, okay, it would be the lead in it. The characters from The Whip. Yes, from The and Whip. Yet, so it would be a book about Lee. So each character had their own novel. I think it would be a very, very difficult task. Oh, Karen, I, we could talk for hours that you are fascinating. Yep. Excellent author. Thank you. And um, thank you so much for being part of our family this night and part of the show. I love it. And everyone it. who's listening, whether it be in our podcast later or live, all we ask is if you like what you hear, share the information with someone, and they will surely thank you. Yeah.